Hi, I'm uh, Abed Faruti, uh, founder and CEO of uh, Silulite Aviation. So this is our new shop. We just moved here. We make uh, AR-1 gyroplanes uh, here mostly, also a few trikes. Uh, so we have just moved into the shop. It's still kind of being in setup, but uh, this is where the AR-1 comes together. The whole assembly is done here. Uh, our fabrication shop is in uh, near Sebring, Florida and our composite shop uh, is also in Florida on the East Coast. So uh, basically we have three different shops uh, working on the AR-1. Um, and then behind me here, you notice we have different assembly stations. This is where the assembly for the gyroplane happens. These are mainly dedicated to the gyro. So uh, the frame starts here. On the frame, we get all the, all the scissor cubes, the control rods, all those kind of things. They get installed here. We put them usually um, when they're here. We get put them on the uh, instead of putting the main wheels on, we put them on dollies so we can move them around because uh, the tire is one of the last things we put on for the main after the body. And we do put on the front wheel usually. Uh, the front wheel is a new design. If you notice, uh, it has completely. Um, trailing uh, trail in it and so it has about three inches of trail and it has suspension that's built into this uh, uh, round uh, CNC part right here stainless steel part and it has a spider coupling with uh, hard urethane rubber that essentially acts as suspension so you know usually with your hand you should have no hardly any give on it but if you do land on it uh, you will see that it actually has a decent amount of gear. For example, if I do this, you can start to see some creep. So, in a, in a landing situation, it has actually give. And the advantage of that was that the peak shock load being transferred up the spine is reduced quite a lot by this absorbing between the tire and the suspension here, absorbing that and passing it on. The peak shock load that goes up uh, pilot's spine in a hard landing or a crash gets reduced, um, possibly saving pilot's back. Uh, we saw in an Apollo accident that the peak shock load get transferred here, which I would think is the exact same thing that would happen in many of these gyroplanes that have this style. The other thing we did to reduce that possibility is we made the seat frame adjustable it's one and a half inch adjustability and it is connected by bolts instead of being welded directly to the frame. And the reason for that also is that the, when you have a hard landing, this is one of the areas you would check. If you pass about 3 G, this bolt will start bending. So uh, that bolt will absorb uh, a lot of the shock loads and bend instead of passing it along to the pilot. So the other advantage of this is that you can adjust it. If you're a taller guy, you would adjust it to the lowest setting. If you're a shorter guy, you adjust it to the highest setting and it makes it easier uh, to get your uh, ergonomics correct. You notice here, there's adjustable uh, foot paddles right here. We have a false floor on uh, inside the fiberglass uh, compartment that we put with hydro turf on it that you put your heel on kind of like an airplane, airplane rudder pedals, you have a fault floor and you you can adjust this to whatever you would like pretty quickly. Uh, so the, you have a trail here but the rudder is still linked. So if you notice, we haven't run the rudder cables on this station yet, but the rudder cable would go right here and secure. And then you have a linked rudder to the front wheel, but with a trail. So three inch trail does allow that if you have a certain amount of forward speed and you touch down with this prop, it's gonna try and if you allow it, it will try to straighten it out by itself. Uh, here's a parking brake valve right here. Uh, on this station we don't do, uh, we'll move on to the other station. So here basically you get all the way to this point and we have the engine on and we get to this point and then it'll start to move on that side and usually we end up taking the front wheel back off uh, at that station 
to uh, check certain things. But this, for example, right here is another option, which is a folding mask option. So the folding mask will fold back, and what it allows to do is, is like a, the trikes have always had that option, but for some reason the other things uh, seem to not have that. Um, what it's going to allow to do is allow to fold back and be able to go in a regular trailer, uh, enclosed trailer, without having to customize the trailer and make a bigger opening in the center. So once that's done, all that is done, we move on to the second station. This is where all the controls are established and adjusted, including the throttle controls, uh, the brake controls, the back controls. If somebody has taken the option of back seat controls, they would get that. Um, all this stuff is here, the scissor tubes are here. These are hand removable so that you can take the stick out. You'll be able to take these bolts out and take this bolt out right here and this one out and you just take the whole assembly out so then there is no stick. If you notice the same thing is kind of done here where you take the spin out, this cowling safety pin and you can remove the whole paddle out and so that if you're, if you're not training somebody and you don't need this back there, you just take this cowling pin out and the whole pedal just comes out. So you're not afraid that somebody's going to interfere with you. There have been an accident in Saudi Arabia, for example, where it's suspected highly that one of the guys pushed the pedals uh, from the back seat right at the end, about five feet, six feet off the ground, and the gyroplane just rotated and flipped them over, and they, both the people died in MPO sport. So we did that um, to kind of alleviate some of that concern. Uh, again, uh, we use Matco wheels and brakes essentially. So here's a Matco master cylinder. Uh, so all the parts are readily available from Matco. Uh, all the lines are, all the brake lines are uh, Teflon lines with stainless steel braid on them. So very nice quality. Should last lifetime of the aircraft. Parking valve right here, right US made, completely available at Aircraft Spruce. Um, this part right here, if you do have a problem and you uh, bend out the urethane rubber, if you look inside here, you just open it up like this and you can take out the urethane rubber and put a new spider in and you're back in business. So if you have a hard landing and uh, you, you deform the urethane spider, you check it by taking this stuff, this uh, leg, fork leg, which is made out of uh, billet aluminum off with four bolts. You look inside, you inspect the rubber, uh, urethane spider, and if it's deformed, you simply take it out and replace it with a new one. It's uh, an industrial one available readily from us or from industry supply houses. And you just replace that and put it back together and you're back in business. So once we get through that and we start putting the body on, the body gets put on in this station, and then the wiring is done right there or uh, in a wiring shop and then it comes back and then we start finishing the wiring. So this one is pretty close to finish. This uh, actually is being built for Scott and Scott is here been working with us and tomorrow this is going to get airworthy actually. So this is pretty close to being finished. So tomorrow evening this, this gyroplane will be done. But uh, if you notice the fuel tanks are here. Here's a side gauge right here with uh, fuel resistant uh, side gauge. Uh, you can visually see the fuel. If you notice uh, on the stick here, and it's uh, locked forward, this is the mechanical pre rotator. So, what it's doing is when I press this, it's actually engaging the pre rotator activation bracket back here. but mechanically, not doing it by air, air uh, cylinder or anything like that. It's just mechanically actuating it. And then you have adjustment right here and you have adjustment right in the front. So as the cable stretches a little bit over time, you can come and adjust that, uh, simple jam nuts, and then you're back to adjustment. So what you want to see, like this one is a little too tight, you want to adjust this so that you can, this is not tight, so when you rotate this, it should be loose, so that needs to be adjusted on this one. The propeller, 
we are uh, using Sterna three blade propeller as uh, one of our propellers and and we have our own design being made for us that we are using as a standard. Um, so the pre-rotator gets activated here, then it has a complete mechanical linkage with uh, this universal joint right here, uh, six flute shaft going into a 90 degree gearbox. It's uh, an Italian gearbox that we are using that I think uh, many of these guys use in MTO, uh, ELA, etc. And then it goes up here, Again, a universal joint here, six foot shaft, going into a female coupler, which is welded right there, going up and activating with a Bendex. Uh, the Bendex is made by a company in Illinois, uh, it's a local part, and going into uh, and engaging the Bendex to the ring gear, which also we make ourselves. So we make all these joints, the six foot shaft, all these things are made by us. Uh, so we do all of that stuff. But the Bendex is made by a company and this gearbox is made by a com uh, outside company. So those are the things that uh, work on it. If you notice on the pre-rotator, our main part that has had some problems in some designs uh, cracking and stuff and when it cracks of course things can go really wrong because you can go through the propeller that can swing it into the rotor blades uh, and it's expensive fix because of that. We made this out of steel and zinc plated it. So it's actually steel. It can take a lot more cycles. It's a little bit heavier, but it should last uh, quite a long time without having any fatigue issues or cracking issues. Um, so that's the steel part right there. That's a difference. This is also steel. It's also not aluminum. So those are a little bit penalty in weight, but it's worth it because if th that does break, it's critical and it can cause a lot of damage. Um, the, the coolant, the oil cooler, we also get that made for us uh, specifically. Because it's uh, installed down here. Uh, so the oil cooler is here. It's attached with uh, steel braided Teflon uh, lines, which are lifetime lines essentially. So you shouldn't have to change them throughout the lifetime of the aircraft. Uh, they can handle 1000 PSI, so no need to change them. If you come up here, you will see the exhaust also made uh, essentially by us. So the exhaust is here, it can take a heater element, so we can actually cabin heat it if you order the enclosed uh, uh, option. And uh, so we are basically, uh, and, and all these lines right here are custom made by us to fit our gyroplane. So these are aluminum lines, not, uh, these are coolant lines which are welded aluminum, 6061 aluminum, 6000 aluminum, not, uh, uh, not hoses. Uh, here, uh, again, this is a standard Rotex part, although we are starting to make, get, it, get this part made for us as well. So we are essentially gonna be using our own radiator here as well. And it's going to go just like this and attach right here with this rubber isolator. As we come towards the back here, you'll notice a tail that may look a little bit different than most tails people might be used to looking at uh, many of the European style aeroplanes, so to speak. And if you notice this tail, the rudder is quite a bit larger and that's done on purpose. And the rudder has slightly different airfoil as well. Um, as well as if you look at the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer here, it has vertical fins that are quite a bit different and basically more. So they compress the air more, produce less vortices, make the tail more effective. Uh, the rudder is quite a bit larger. It gives a lot more rudder authority and uh, it actually behaves quite well at low speeds. Uh, you still have some rudder authority left at low speed. Um, the rudder is tight, so the movement on the rudder is very small, uh, very effective rudder. And one of the things that we found is, uh, unlike some of the gyroplanes, other gyroplanes of this style, we don't have as much, uh, basically in flight, you're not as much rudder active, even at faster speeds. A lot of people find that some of these European gyros, as you start going faster, some of them, not all, uh, tend to require some rudder work, especially 
uh, going faster or while making changes to power up in flight. Here you will be on the rudders mainly during takeoff and landing. And in flight you can pretty much fly unless you want to do something uh, uncoordinated. You can pretty much fly without putting your feet on the rudders at all. Uh, you can do you know, medium banks, low, low banks, high banks without actually putting your feet on the rudders too much. So that's just one of the advantages of this scale. So the tail is completely different and completely newly designed. Then, if you notice on the uh, on the gyroplane, the landing gear fairings that that is right there is on that side. We have a something so something will fall on it. But if you notice here, this landing gear fairing has an airfoil shape. So this airfoil shape actually starts producing some residual lift. Uh, as the gyroplane starts to go faster. So we actually unload the gyroplane at a certain speed. We unload the rotor, I mean, at, uh, at a certain speed a little bit. Uh, it can give, give us up to 60, 70 pounds of lift, depending on the speed you're going. Uh, at lower speed, it doesn't really do anything, but at faster speeds, it starts producing some residual lift and actually uh, helps uh, cut what the rotor, rotor blade has to do, uh, ro rotor this has to do. Um, Again, the wheels and brakes here are Matco aircraft wheels and brakes. They use 5606 mil spec brake fluid. Uh, all the parts are available directly from Matco. Uh, rated for 660 pounds uh, static load at, at three times the safety factor. Very nice. Very heavy duty. Uh, kind of made for training purposes. And then uh, as you come forward here, you'll see this is the step. So even though there will be a seat here, there will be a back seat here, but to get in and out, you step on this rubber. You don't really do anything else besides stepping on it to get in and out. And because you don't want to put your feet down here, you want to put them here. And it also makes it easier to get in and out because you're not having, unless you're really tall, you'll have a hard time putting your feet all the way down. So that's one of the advantages. If you notice our if you notice our uh, back steering here is also adjustable. I can adjust it. For example, it's set right here. If you look at these teeth right there, I can actually take this pin out and adjust it for a particular person. So forward or further back, depending on how tall their legs are and how much bend they want in their ankle. So that's a good piece of machining, uh, you know, using EDM. So. <coughs> We actually make these teeth, they fit pretty tightly and you take this pin out and you can adjust it for yourself, wherever you'd like. So, very good there. And if you notice uh, on the frame, I'll go back to this one for a second. If you notice on the frame, this frame, this steel tube is just not straight. It actually has an upward angle on it. So it's a little bit of a departure from a regular gyro plane. Uh, this comes from us building trikes and having experience there. So we get both a rake and a trail going at a particular angle without, which allows us to make this, this uh, bushing well, welded in there at a straight, instead of being at some kind of an angle and a weird cut here. We just able to cut it straight and put it down in there and weld it. So those are some of the things we did in manufacturing to make things easy, get the rake and trail on this uh, idea as well. So, uh, the differences. If you look at our landing gear, that's another difference. Our landing gear is not composite. It's actually 7075 P6. And it's uh, worked to get that shape, so it's a leaf spring. However, because it's aluminum 7076 uh, P6 of a certain dimension, it doesn't have, it has a lot more absorption. Uh, and uh, and less rate of spring, so essentially it doesn't. It's not so tight that it springs back so much. It absorbs also as it goes down. So uh, many people comment on, oh, uh, your suspension is better. Well, the suspension is this actually. Uh, of course, you get some suspension from the tire and wheel, but mainly this is our suspension. That's the thing that you're feeling that allows us to be on grass or. Uh, uh, and not on necessarily paved surfaces and feel less of that movement that you would feel 
in something with a stiff uh, suspension, which is usually the fiberglass bow. So that's uh, an advantage of this type of leaf spring compared to a composite. Um, also, the composite lemon gear uh, tends to have uh, problems sometimes depending on your weather and how much heat and how much UV is put on it, um, what kind of color it is. This one, it doesn't matter. It's one, it's covered up by fiberglass covers, and second, it's it's metal, so it doesn't care about any of that. So that's uh, one of the other things it has an advantage. Uh, it costs more money, of course. We have to mill that, bend it, cold work it, but uh, I believe that this is a better solution than a composite landing. So we have done some improvements. Uh, we started, of course, with as a skeleton from Apollo uh, AG1 gyroplane, but we actually completely redesigned the frame. And it may, um, you know, of course, this is different. The dimensions, the where it sits in the body is different. Um, the mast and how it attaches is different. The folding mast is, of course, an option which is completely not existent in that model. Um, we kept the area for engine mounting and stuff very similar because we thought it was very well done. It's kind of heavy duty. It can take some good landings. Um, and we changed the front fork completely with suspension. Uh, we changed the front seat frame completely and bolted it instead of welding it. Uh, so those are some of the differences we did. The dimensions here are actually different than Apollo. Uh, this frame will fit in an Apollo body, but it is not the same as an Apollo frame. So, um, if you come at the back, the, one of the things you've noticed is we have moved the tail. Not only is the tail bigger, the tail has actually moved further back by about 10 inches. So, to make the tail more effective, that the pulleys are all AN pulleys. Uh, it can be gotten from any of the local AN supply houses. So. On the spec, all the hardware is AN. It's all regular AN aircraft hardware found in the US and in Europe and many countries. Um, all our fuel lines on top from going forward are going to be like this, which is essentially fire resistant. It can take 2000 degree flame uh, or heat for up to five minutes without having any effect. These are lifetime fuel lines uh, in the engine compartment area. They will last 2,000 hours when the engine is to be PBO'd. You no need to change them. They're Teflon inside with uh, high silicone, high heat silicone fire sleeve on top. And uh, there's no need to change them in anything and they can take all the heat and they're EASA and FAA approved. So those are some of the things that will be different from some of the European models which are still using the older style lines. Um, they cost more money, but I think they're worth it, um, especially in the high heat area. Uh, so those are some of the differences on the actual frame. Now, as far as the body is concerned, if you look at the body, the body has uh, scoop intakes right here to cool certain elements. For example, the oil tank right here to supply, and also we got rectifier right here that also gets air directed to it during the operation so it doesn't overheat. All our wiring, now this wiring is getting finalized, but if you look at the loom underneath right here, this loom, if I took this apart, all our wiring is step cell wire. This is all step cell mill spec wire. It's not automotive wire or anything like that. It's all Teflon coated wire, a mill spec that is used that you'll find in a Cessna 172, same thing. Um, if you, it's hard to see, but underneath, if you notice, there is a service loop, but then there is a connector, there is a cannon plug. And I can take this whole uh, instrument panel, take it loose, disconnect the cannon plug, disconnect the antenna wire, and I can actually take the whole thing apart and work on it on the table. And just the cannon plug is the connection between here and all the rest of the wires. 
You have an engine kill switch at the back, which is an instructor setup, which is guarded with a switch. Um, you have uh, a fuel level gauge right here, which will have a fuel level sender right there. <coughs> the ins this is our standard instrument panel with a radio, which has a built in intercom. Um, and it wor works with our layout is basically vertical speed, altitude, airspeed. This is your engine instruments. This is for 912 ULS. So you got, uh, you know, water temp, you got uh, oil temp, and you got oil pressure. And then you have the flight instruments right here. Then you have the rotor RPM, and then you have the engine RPM on this side. So those are the two RPMs right there. You have 12 volt outlet. You have dual Cessna master switch, which works based off of a master solenoid so when you shut this off the only hot wire is between the master solenoid and the battery so there's only a short wire between them so yes yeah, so once you turn the master on you can turn on for example the the radio and com is on a circuit breaker and a switch together and then you have circuit breaker and a switch for the strobe and nav position light and then if you had taken if you take different options like landing light, etc., etc., th those switches will be here. So those cutouts are already there if somebody ever wants to add them. This is the Mode C transponder cutout. We generally uh, do Sandia Mode C or we do Trig TT22 Mode S. So this is the Mode, uh, Mode C transponder cutout. It's right now blanked, but uh, if later on the customer wanted to add that transponder, he can. Um, all he needs is a circuit breaker and that, and he'll be in business. So all the wires are run for it already. We have uh, Hobbs meter right there. We got the temp for rotor temp, uh, rotor bearing temp right there. Uh, fuel, fuel things right there. And these are some circuit breakers that are not controlled by switches. They are just circuit breakers. For example, this is the main charging circuit breaker, electric trim circuit breaker. So electric trim. We have, and I think just making sure that if I wanted to, if you notice, right there. So just electrical linear actuator, controlled by the hat with the relay, relay deck, and simply provide, and you can do it from the front seat or back seat, right on the stick. Okay, so if we look inside here, I've put a light on this so we can see it better. But this handle right here is our rotor brake handle. So this is also simply a mechanical handle that centers over. And essentially, it up in this position, this is on. So when you sit in there, the first thing you are going to do is drop it down. Now we do provide two storage bags right here. They're quite large. so. Uh, you have to make sure that this goes down to a certain degree to disengage, you know, and the bag doesn't get hit. But it's essentially underneath, underneath the left hand. So once you're done shutting the engine off and you have let go of the brake, you can essentially pull this up to apply the rotor brake. So the rotor brake is, if you notice, the cable is running right down here. The cable is going all the way up along this line. You notice this center cable right at the back right there that's where the cable is going this cable right here and if you notice it goes right there up there and it's applying the brake with a simple brake pad on it that can be replaced without taking the rotor head apart or anything like that that's rotor brake applied that's rotor brake disengaged everything here yeah. is American made yeah so we're there the customer is not going to have any kind of what about as far as parts or yeah so part there, availability yeah. Or, so there uh, yes so the gyroplane is mainly all American made there are there are a few things that we of course the engine the Rotex engine is ubiquitous in light sport aircraft and we get that from Kodiak which is the engine is actually made in Austria but there are four or five service stations for that uh, there are a few parts that are still uh, not made in the U.S. But those are common parts that all the light sports are using. The 
the uh, rotor blades, uh, we tested different rotor blades, we tested American rotor blades, but we are still uh, decided on the Averso Stella rotor blade, which is made in France, but we keep them in stock here, generally speaking. So, uh, if you need a rotor, God forbid, if you had something happen, need a rotor, we usually have a stock of them, like for example, sitting up there, that we can send out to you. So, we always try to carry uh, those rotor blades in stock uh, moving forward. So. And, and, it, and earlier you had mentioned about um, a uh, another prop that you guys have. Yes. Um, so yeah, we actually designed our own prop, and uh, it is being made for us by a prop manufacturer, who shall remain unnamed. But uh, but it's uh, specific to our gyroplane. It's uh, optimized for the speed range where our gyroplane kind of cruises at between 1,600 miles an hour. So. Um, that's what it's optimized for, and uh, it's the right size without cutting any tips or anything like that. So that's a standard prop, and the Sterna is a very good prop. It's a little bit of an upgrade uh, at $300 uh, for, the, for the Sterna. And then the other question, it, is your, um, the shell, your cabin, is it bigger than just uh, than the Yeah, so our shell, Apollo our cabin, uh, yes, it's bigger than the Apollo. Our front seat, is actually uh, two inches wider than the Apollo. And it has, uh, and I should show you that because we did not see that, but our front seat has also a back glove compartment, or if you need back instruments, then we cut it out for back instrumentation as well and install it there. So there is, a, there is a, you can actually have a glove compartment in the back. There, like I said, there's two bags under the front seat, and then there is options for bag on the, on the front seat a thin bags that go in the in the sides of the front seat for the back guy to access during flight, as well as those are kind of like map bags. And then behind the back seat, there's an option for another bag. So there, there's they, you can have a total of five bags. And we are, by the way, in the process. Uh, I sh should be careful saying that because I haven't released it yet. But there will be a removable belly uh, storage compartment that we will provide that will go right under the belly, right near the CG of the uh, aircraft, so it won't affect so much weight, but you can actually put in, you know, up to 25 pounds in there and, and go with it. And it will be a fiberglass, nice clean look, uh, same paint as your aeroplane, and you can install it and remove it. We are, we are working on that right now. Okay, what's the total uh, weight capacity? Like Oh, yes, yeah, so we, I think we are close to 580 pounds in useful load. So uh, our gyroplane plane is 600, 620 pounds empty weight, depending on options. And, uh, the, you know, our gross weight is about 632. So we are like between 580 to 600 pounds of useful load. And we are, we are providing, by the way, as an option, to a standard rotor and a rotor that is 8.6 meters instead of 8.4 meters. So if people are flying at high altitude and stuff, that's 8.6 meter rotor is what we would recommend for them. So it would make a difference. Okay. If anybody is interested in our gyroplane, the AR-1, uh, uh, American Ranger 1 gyroplane, uh, they can go to our website at www.silverlightaviation.com or they can email us at info at silverlightaviation.com or they can call us at 813-786-8290 and we'd be glad to answer any questions or provide them any information.